Happy launch week, everyone. MLB The Show 23 has officially launched, and it's opening week for baseball, so it's a great time to be a baseball fan. And if you are new to the series, you may be going through all of the settings, and you may be wondering what all these pitching modes are. And today, we're going to be giving you a pitching tutorial in MLB The Show 23 for all you newcomers, and perhaps maybe some of you veteran players that have just stuck to one mode this entire time that you've played MLB The Show. But before we get into every single pitching method and give you that quick tutorial, don't forget to hit the subscribe button for more content just like this. And if this video does help you out, hit the like button. Also, we do stream over on twitch.tv forward slash Brian Evolved and we play games like MLB The Show 23, Out of the Park Baseball 24, and many other games. So don't forget to follow us over there as well. So the way this is going to work, we're going to go over five different methods within MLB The Show and how you can pitch. And it's nothing new, again, if you've been a part of the series for a while, but if you are brand new to the series or you've stuck to one method since you've played MLB The Show, this may help you out. We're going to start from easiest and we're going to go to hardest. So if you are looking to figure out what pinpoint pitching is, in this video's description as well as along the timeline, they're going to be split up in chapters. So if you're looking for a specific mode, go ahead and jump to that chapter now. But without further ado, let's just go through it all. So the very first mode we have is called Classic. If you are familiar with games from like maybe the Sega Genesis or you're just easy with the one button play, this is going to be the most familiar to you. So as you can see here on the screen, we got Marcus Stroman here pitching for the Cubs. Go Cubs, go. You have five pitches here on the screen, and you'll go through all these with every single pitching method. But you see all those buttons on here. This is the Xbox version, so you can pick a sinker, slider, forcing fastball, split finger, or cutter. We're going to pick a sinker here. And every pitch you pick here, as you can see here on the screen, you have the baseball, and then you have the yellow arrows, or they're called chevron in the settings. And it's going to point to where the pitch should go. Now, in classic mode, all you have to do is pick your pitch and pick where you want it to eventually end up and press A or X button on your PlayStation controller or B on the Switch. Now, a sinker, or actually it might be A on the Switch, I'm not sure. Uh, the sinker there, we're going to try hitting this very corner here and you're going to see how very difficult it is to locate pitches when you play on classic mode. As you can see here, so it's a bad example because it hits the corner very well. The very first time I threw something on here, it did not hit where I was trying to hit. So let's try it again. This time it's a slider. As you can see, that one just kind of hung up there and went to the middle of the plate. So with Classic, you will have those opportunities to actually hit what you're trying to do. But with no control over it, it's just kind of going to flail all over the place. And when we do a hitting tutorial, you're going to get the same idea here where these easier methods may be easier to pick up and play. But if you're interested in maybe getting competitive online or eventually bumping up that difficulty settings against the computer, it may not work out in your favor when you play with methods like Classic. So again, pick a fastball. We're just going to try hitting the upper inside corner on a right-handed hitter. And it missed and it hit almost the uh, very edge of the batter's box there. So again, Classic mode, easy to play with, but you're not going to get much in the way of accuracy. So next up is called Pulse. So just a spoiler, anytime you pick any kind of pitching method, you're going to be met with the same pitch lock screen as you see here on the right. So if you're going to pick a cutter, this is the method you're going to be given. This can be very nauseating to look at for a full game. And to be honest, I don't play with pulse pitching, never have tried it, never want to play with it, but I've done it enough to know what it is actually entailing. Uh, so you see this pulsing circle that's going all over the place. The point of this is to get to its very smallest point. And kind of like with the easy pitching method of classic this is going to be a little more accurate but not much better so that one's good timing here you can take a look here even with good timing the cutter didn't really cut it just stayed over the middle plate didn't make any movement whatsoever so the sinker we're gonna try dropping here on the low inside corner more good timing here it's a little better but it's still kind of hung up there and kind of was left out to dry. Throw a slider here to the lower corner here. More good timing. And the slider, it worked out better. It's going to be outside the zone against a right-handed hitter. That's actually not a bad pitch that I would throw. So it's not bad. It gives you a little bit more of a challenge. It makes you more involved in the pitching process. But pulse, it just, to me, I'm not a big fan of it. Again, if you plan on getting competitive or trying your best against the computer and starting to up that dif difficulty in the Hall of Fame and Legend mode, 
this is not going to be the method you want to go with either. But it is there. It's an it's an easy, engaging way to play with the pitching styles. And that one's early. So this is a fastball upper in, and it went out and wasn't really. That's that's a ninety four mile an hour fastball. It's not going to produce very good results for you defensively. Now this next method, if you were an MVP baseball fan back in the day, it's going to be very familiar to you. So you go to pick any of your pitches. By the way, this is called meter. Go to pick a four seam fastball. You're met with this little quarter circle. So this is starting to get more familiar with you if you played MVP baseball back in the mid 2000s. Now this is a three button press mechanic. First button is going to set the meter to go. All right. Second button is going to be where you're going to set your power. And then third button is going to hit the accuracy. Now, this is going to be a little better in terms of you're going to get closer to where you're actually trying to pitch it. But of all five methods, this to me, this timing is probably the most difficult, even though it's the one that's most familiar to me because I remember playing with this exact method in MVP baseball growing up. But again, just for practice here, that's first pitch, set our power. And how about that first try? We actually knocked it right there on the money. So four seam fastball outside, it was pretty close to where we set it. Now, if you have a slider, it's going to do the same thing. We're going to go to the bottom corner here, set our power and come back. And we just late. Now, again, you can get real punished on this very fast and it can get real frustrating, especially as your pitcher gets tired. This meter just freaking flies all over the place and it can get very frustrating very quickly because you're going to find out that you're giving up a few more home runs than you're hoping for. But again, if you played MVP baseball back in the day, it's going to be the most familiar to you. And if it's something that you want to use to maybe be a little more competitive or give you a much better challenge without introducing some very foreign methods that we're about to talk about here in a second, this isn't a bad choice either. Now, the timing of when pure analog showed up, I think was probably around 16 or 17. I'm wrong. So correct me in the comments if you are familiar with when it showed up. But this was, I believe, pinpoint showed up last year so this at this point when pure analog was the latest and greatest in pitching mechanics this was what you would see in the competitive space or watch on twitch and stuff like that where this is what people would use because it provided you the most control compare this to pinpoint it's not as controllable as pinpoint is and pinpoint can get pretty difficult because well if you played skate versus tony hawk that's the kind of difficulty curve we're looking at here so take a look here, you pick, pick your pitch. Uh, I already forgot what I picked, so we're gonna, it was a sinker. So sinker here, as you can see that circle, so I'll just show you here to the side of the grass where you can actually see the circle. That is going to be, if you hit something perfect, that's going to be the area that the pitch should end up in. So for a sinker, we're just gonna try to bring it down here, make it easy, bottom inside corner. And with this, you're using your right analog stick to bring the meter down. Now you're gonna hold this stick down until you get that yellow, and I'll blow it up so it's a lot easier to see, that yellow line there about three quarters of the way down. And you're gonna bring a baseball that's gonna show up all the way down. You're gonna try to time it to hit that yellow line. And then when you bring it back up, that's going to, you're gonna try to bring that ball into that little circle that has the reticle around it. So just for practice here, kind of show you what it looks like. There's a the baseball and there's a line underneath the baseball and I missed. So when I missed, you could see it go to the left. And as I talk here, I'll show just a quick screenshot. So it's a lot easier to look at because it disappears fast. And if you're unfamiliar with this, you may want to have that look. It's not easy to master because at least for me, flicking the stick, it gets really weird, really fast. And I would get punished pretty easily with this, but again, this made more sense to me right out the gate than pinpoint does. And once you get pinpoint explained to you, it becomes a much easier game for you, but it also takes a lot more practice. So you can see this slider in action here. And that was a lot better. I wasn't as frantic with it. And that's pretty close to where we're at. It hung a little bit because I was off of lining it up, but it wasn't too bad. Try it again here. That was good, but accuracy was off because I went way too right with it. Show you one more time early and I lost it a little bit but as you can see I missed I was early but because the game rewards you a little bit more for the little harder method of pitching you get a little more leeway I think is probably the easiest way of saying it and I didn't miss all that much and even then it was out of the zone so I'm probably not going to get punished too badly for it again 
pitching in this game is not just about the mechanics of it. It's also strategy. You don't want to throw fastballs right down the middle, even if they are perfect, perfect for you as a pitcher, because MLB hitters can still hit very long balls if a pitch is right down the middle and it's a straight pitch. And we'll show you one more here with the slider. And that was probably my best one so far. Again, in the zone for that type of pitch, I'd want that slider to be out of the zone so the hitter would go chase him for it. And just to give you an idea, when with Stroman's kind of probably a bad example because he does a much shortened version of the windup. When you go to the stretch with pitchers or you bring a reliever, and I'll give you an idea what that is if you're unfamiliar, what the stretch is versus the windup. The whole meter system, whether it's meter, whether it's uh, pure analog or pinpoint, which we're about to talk about, the meters go a lot faster, so you're going to have to get that timing down a lot better. But let's go into pinpoint now that we're talking about it. Usually you're scared of the unknown, and for me, pinpoint was the unknown. I kind of just hung out in my own world for the first year that it showed up, and then eventually I kind of jumped into it. It's, it's difficult. So this, this may look confusing. I mentioned the skate Tony Hawk comparison. I just ripped that off, and I think that's a very good comparison because Tony Hawk, you're just pressing buttons and you're doing flips, you're doing grabs. With skate, you have to be more intricate like you see here on the screen where you're doing certain combinations with the stick and, well, as you can see on screen, you're going to be doing that with the analog stick to perform this pitch. Now, this is a sinker, but just to give you a much simplified version of all this, let's start with a fastball. So pick the fastball, and everything you see here, and I'm going to slow this down and also give you screen caps of it so it's a lot easier to understand. Just here on screen, the blue line is about how fast you want to move the stick and the consistency of it. Go too fast, go too slow. It's going to mess up the timing, and it's going to mess up your ability to be accurate with the pitches. You're going to be more liable to hang. You're going to be more liable to hit hitters. It's going to be all over the place. So you can see there on the bottom circle, I'm, I'm just going to bring this down and show you here, and this is bad. But those two blue circles there you saw, you're going to want to time those to be the smallest possible they can be. And I don't know if there's a way for me to slow this down in real time as I'm playing it, but as you bring this down, the top blue circle, I wanted to get it smaller, and I was too slow bringing it down. So we'll try again here. That was a little better and a little better so again the closer you get to those circles that show up and the closer you get to them being at their absolute smallest the more you're going to get the perfect release for these pitches and the better you're going to be when it comes to being pinpoint to where you're actually throwing it so when it comes to all the pitching methods this is going to be your most accurate to your mechanic that you can possibly be so if you pick a fastball and again how i mentioned earlier how this little circle behind the ball that dark circle if you get the perfect release point it's going to show up in that point and you know that you'll get a perfect release point when at the very top of your pitching it'll say perfect it's close 87 percent accuracy and i was again a little early on that one As you can see there, I got the perfect notification right there. That was perfect bringing it down. Bring a sinker here. 88% accuracy. Eh, that's a little slow. Or it says early. That one's tough. There's going to be some tough pitches. A, a split finger is hard. Change-ups are hard when you're coming out of the stretch because you have to go all the way around and then bring it down. With the split finger there, you're going one way and then back way and back up. So check, check it out again. See that method? That's not easy to master. And I really screwed that one up. But even then, I still brought it down at a pretty decent clip and said I was 90% accurate. So while I thought in my head it might not have been the greatest, eh, I was a little slow coming back up. But again, as you see this more and more often, as you play it more and more often, it's going to be a lot easier and more simple, and it's going to be a lot more rewarding. Pinpoint is a hard method to get used to, to get good at. But as you see it more and more often, you're going to understand it a lot more often, and you're going to get much better at it much quicker uh, the more you practice. Simply just go into practice mode like I'm doing right now, and this is going to be where you need to cut your teeth and just get good at it. And the way I look at pinpoint is, to me, it makes pitching fun. Classic, meter, pure analog, it kind of makes pitching mundane. 
And the way I compare it is akin to driving automatic versus a manual transmission car. Automatic's pretty boring, but manual, oh, if you know how to drive a manual, it is a hell of a lot of fun. And it makes driving fun, at least for me. That's, that's the way I am. Driving to me is a very boring task. Pitching in this game is a very boring task. You introduce something like pinpoint, it's difficult to grasp at first, but once you get it, it, is, it makes the game more rewarding. It makes it more fun. And go back to the rewarding part of it, you're going to get rewarded for actually doing good at it. I'm not that good at it yet, but you, you'll you understand once you actually get into it. And again, your monitors, your game modes, check all of that. If your monitor has a bad refresh rate, if your TV doesn't have game mode on, you're going to notice timing being off. If you think you're hitting worse than you should be, check that out too. That's a free tip for you. And that's not just uh, an excuse to pretend you're not bad at a game. Hey, perfect. We got one. It, it's it's legitimate because a game like this requires very, very precise timing, especially in a mini game mode like this. 69, actually, nice. We got to end on that. So that's all five pitching methods. I can still use a little practice at Pinpoint. I'm going to still practice here with Marcus Stroman. Again, some things to remember. If you want it easier, start at the beginning of this video with Classic. If you want it harder, a little more challenging, yet a little more rewarding, Pinpoint is the way to go. Another tip, which we already reiterated, or at least we already talked about, but I'm going to reiterate now, is you go from the stretch, you bring in a reliever that has a quicker pitching delivery. That meter's going to be a lot faster. So, again, jump into practice mode with your favorite team that you're going to be playing with a lot or your favorite players in Diamond Dynasty and just get used to their pitching mechanics. So when you do go into a competitive match, if you're playing ranked seasons or battle royale or you're playing Hall of Fame mode against the computer on franchise, this is going to be where you want to be because when you get to those points, you'll be ready. You'll be ready to go. Again, if this video helped you out, share it with a friend, a friend who just picked up MLB The Show and is looking at the pitching selection screen and has no idea where to start. This is where they should start is this video to learn all five methods in the game. And again, if it helped you out, like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. If you want to see more tutorial style videos, let me know what you'd like to see next. At some point, we'll do the batting stuff and we'll jump into Diamond Dynasty franchise and all that fun stuff. And again, we're also streaming on twitch.tv forward slash Brian Evolved. And again, I want to thank you for your support and it's opening week, fellas. Let's enjoy some baseball because it's back, baby.